Hello and welcome to the video for how do I use the UMG spin box. I've gone ahead and created a quick example for us. If I run it, you'll see I have three spin boxes, each of them color coded, and it allows me to change the text in the red, green, and blue. I can also hit my reset button and it will change it back to my defaults. We're going to quickly go over the parameters for each spin box. By default, you have the content, style, slider and display sections along with custom events. In the content it contains the current value, you have the minimum value which is enabled or disabled, maximum value, minimum slider value and maximum slider value. Minimum value basically sets the minimum range, you, can, you cannot go below this range. Maximum value sets your maximum value. As we are creating a linear color I've set these to 0 and 1 respectively. Minimum slider value sets where you can slide the value. Maximum slider value is the same thing. If these are disabled, they will be set to the minimum and maximum values. This is useful, for example, you may want the player to only slide between 0 and 1. However, you may want the actual maximum value to be 2, which can be manually entered if they wish to overdrive it. Our next session is our style section. Our style allows us to change the background brush using standard brush properties, hovered background brush, active fill brush, inactive fill brush, the image for the arrows itself, which if we are to run this, you can see on the right hand side is a pair of up down arrows, but that can be styled to anything you would like, along with the padding for the text. As there is text included in this, you can change the foreground color and that will change the color of the text itself. If you wish no image to be displayed for arrows, you can just simply go ahead and go in here, go to draw as, change it to none. If we were to test this, you will notice we now have no image on the red, but on the green. Our next section is slider. We have our delta and slider exponent. Delta determines the amount at which the spin box spins. As we are dealing with a 0 to 1 range, I want a point 001 delta, which means each time I slide the bar, it will change it by a 0 0.001 increment. If I wanted to do, for example, a 1 to 100 range with values of 1, I would put a delta of 1. Slider exponent determines the rate at which it increases as you move the mouse. I would recommend leaving this at 1. As you change it, it starts to go friggin' nuts. Our last section is our font. This allows us to change the font that is displayed as well as the font size and a material. If you change the font size, the display will not react until you hit compile and then it will change appropriately. One of our final sections at the bottom is our event section. Let's see if we can correct this. Yeah, it's close enough. We have four events that are unique to the spin box. We have on value changed, on value committed, on begin slider movement, and on slide on end slider movement. For our example, we are tapping into the on value changed event. On value committed is if you enter it manually. On slide on begin slider movement is when you start beginning the slider movement, and on end slider movement is when you end slider movement. If we look at our graph, this is pretty simple. Basically, after we have changed the value every time we use the slider, we basically reset the color and opacity, but we use the current value only for red, green, or blue. For our reset button, we are manually setting the value of our slider back to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5. So to rerun this again, every time we slide, we call the slider changed event and change the color. When we hit reset, we manually go and set the value for the slider. There is a quick and simple example of how you use the spin box. As you can see, you can use it for many things. You could also use this as a sound setting or for example a thruster. You could use it as a display if you want to instead of a progress bar as it does have the nice text built into it.